Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad. This is my channel, Adam and Orange, and welcome to another Iconics build video. Today on the table, we have from Game of Thrones, the Iron Throne. This is a rather layered looking model we have here, but it looks like it might just be a lot of big pieces. Let's go over to the table, open this up, see what's inside, and start putting it together. And here we have the packaging for the Game of Thrones Iron Throne from Metal Earth. And this is an Iconics package, which is a bit different than what I've been accustomed to because it's an envelope type similar to the Metal Earth. It used to be the Iconics came in a thicker box. You open the top and you pull everything out. There was like a divider in there, an actual almost tray that you pull out with the um, metal sheets in it, but this appears to be different. This is similar to what the Flintstones packaging was like, and I remember making a comment when I opened those, how similar this was going to be. I want to say the Flintstones had a peel tab or something, like easy open. This one does not, so I'm going to revert to my tried and true method of just tearing the top off. Just barely had it. Inside, we have sheets of things. No tweezers this time. Not surprised, a thinner sheet. I guess they've been doing it long enough that most people probably have tweezers at this point. We have basically a metal earth sized sheet. And it looks like two Iconics size. These are rather large pieces, which makes me think this will be a quick-ish build. But I hesitate to snap too quick to a judgment. And then we have the instructions, which are folded different than what I'm accustomed to. But that is not a bad thing. Let's unfold that. It looks like we have one piece of paper. Once you unfold it, it's in a fairly familiar style. We have page one and two, and it's in the iconic style, which is stamps. The top here, I'm going to go over the directions fairly briefly for those that are not familiar with Metal Earth and Iconics models, but I won't spend too much time on it. On page one, you have the Metal Earth Iconics logo. You have this 360 view that's referring to where you can go to this website or scan this QR code to take you to a website where you can see a completed model 360 view that you can move around on screen for reference sake. And that comes in handy, very handy in some models. Sometimes, however, with newer models, it takes a while for the 360 view to actually be available. But here I am to help put it together with you. Below that we have an outline of what the models look like. And we have to create the best connection. We have a sample part with a notation on the slots, the fold lines and the tabs. Tabs basically go into different slots where you twist or fold them to hold things together. Fold lines are pre-scored areas of the metal that are intended to be an area where you fold said part. We have the legend with several different notate several different keys here. The E is pointing at an engraved or painted side. This is not painted, so this is going to be an engraved side. And it's usually talking about a detailed engraving, like a texture or threads of a tire or something that's on the surface. It can be easily confused with the detail that's actually engraved fold lines on the back. So you have to be careful with that. Non-engraved usually points at a side that doesn't have engraving, although it can sometimes point at a side that has the fold line engraving. That can sometimes be confusing, but engraved is pointing, talking about the details of the part. Like for instance, this would be engraved because you can see the engraving of the handles of the swords as opposed to this part, which is just plain black. However, on this side, this part, this is probably engraved part with sort of a detailing here, whereas the back side, there's some engraving lines and some outline, but this is not really considered the engraved detailed side. Below that, you have an attention point that's usually pointing at how something aligns. A lot of times there'll be an off tab that needs to be pointing in a certain direction for a next part to line up, but you really need to pay attention to how things are coming together when you see that arrow or that hand. Blue circle is an old one. It means to insert a tab and fold it 90 degrees. Green triangle means to insert a tab and twist it 90 degrees. The twisted tabs are usually more secure if done properly. The folded tabs, however, look cleaner and usually are on the outside of a part. There's assembly tips about slightly twisting a tab 
the whole parts together until you get more of the part together and I do that very frequently and if I run into that instance I will make a notation and some notation about tools and we'll talk about some tools here in just a moment. Below that we have the assembly steps although before we start with step one we should probably go over to page two and this is laid out a little funny but it's available space. Page two has the different sheets, an outline of the different sheets so you can find the parts. We'll grab one of these in this example. Looks as if we've grabbed the sheet, metal sheet B. And as you can kind of see here, this is an outline of this sheet and it has the parts numbered so you know what the parts are so you can find them and put the model together. They have all three sheets here. I'm not gonna give you an example all three. Go back over here to step one, starting with part one on sheet A, that's what the the blue letter is, it's telling you what sheet to look for part one on. That's very handy, they didn't used to do that. And these lines are kind of indicating how you should curve this. And basically because this is outlined in red, it's not really said anywhere, but the red is indicating something is shaped or turned or folded. And it's trying to indicate this needs to be folded into kind of a wavy shape. And then you come over here, you've got part two on sheet C. It also appears that it needs to have a curve put onto it with the engraved side facing out and then it attaches here with twisted tabs and you end up with that. And that's the gist of how to, to read the instructions. I'm assuming we're going to jump to page three for step two. There you go. And you just follow along doing the sub assemblies and attaching to the main parts. Step, to step three, just kind of follow the arrows through the steps. Sometimes you'll see where it refers back to a previous step like here, step three. Step four is having you add something or add step three to something else. So you would basically add what you built over here, over here, and follow through with the different arrows, including the parts. And really this is a pretty simple one. There's only really two and not even a half pages of instruction. So maybe this will be fairly simple. Let's talk a little bit about tools and we can start putting it's putting this together. Let's talk a little bit about tools. The very basics of what you're gonna need is a pair of tweezers and some clippers. The tweezers, you can do a lot of bending, shaping, twisting of tabs, folding of things over. The clippers are gonna help you get the pieces out of the sheets cleanly and easily by clipping them out instead of trying to bend them out, which can cause damage. I've also supplemented my set with some precision tweezers. I have a couple of pointed ones here. One, I ground the tip down just a little bit to give it a more sturdy tip for tabs and twisting things. And then I have a precision flat set. And between all of these, I can do a lot of bending and shaping and twisting. I also strongly recommend some sort of pliers to complement your set. I have some flat nose here that have definite uses. I have some long needle nose pliers for some of the longer pieces. And then I have some curved tips for grabbing things at an angle and bending them over. We start by putting wave light curves in part one. There are several tabs to bend at 90 degrees on this part.
there is a very narrow middle piece that does not bend. The only way to bend the sides effectively is using the edge of the tweezers handle. Add to that, the instructions made it seem like this part's sides bend at 90 degrees, but it really should be more open, which means I may not have needed to use this method to bend the sides after all. I bend the tabs on one side in a little to help them line up with the slots since the side was at an angle and the tabs pointed outwards. I had a lot of difficulty completely understanding the directions here. I could see that they wanted me to curve the part, but I could not make out how the tabs were going to line up to connect this to the larger body. I thought maybe I was supposed to curve the part all the way around so that the ends meet. That seemed to line up, but I still could not connect the part in a way that made sense. After a long break, I came to realize what I needed to do, and now that my build area was set up at my new place, I began to uncurl part 5 and curve it the other way. I realized I had either misread the instructions or they were misprinted, as I had tried to curve the edges of part 5 away from me while the engraved side was facing me. What I should have done is curved it so that the edges curved towards me. Then the middle tabs were able to line up with their slots on the back of the larger assembly and things began to come together.
It was a bit of a struggle getting these tabs lined up and pressed in. Several adjustments were necessary. Repeat for step 6, but this time we know which way to curve it and roughly how far. I decided to connect the ends of 5 and 6 together first. I used to say in every video, take your time and be patient. That's still good advice. I would add for this model, one needs a little bit of determination.
few things needed tidying up. Now we really start layering in some detail. I wedge the tweezers between two tabs to aid in pushing them over. Things inevitably got bent and squashed as I'm putting parts like this together and taking a moment to straighten some of those things back out.
I was initially going to try and use some 3D printed tapered prototype tools to round the corners of the chair, but it didn't really fit the area here, so I shaped it by hand. Not really that hard to do. I started by aligning and securing the inside tab. The thought was that the outer tabs would be easier to get to and adjust if they did not line up. Now to squeeze the seat into place.
but has been true for many Metal Earth models for years now. Getting the final assemblies of a build together is a struggle. This Iconics model is no exception. I had a rather difficult time lining up these last tabs. In the end, one of them came out of place. Another thing that is causing me trouble here is it appears I misinterpreted another part of the instructions and bent the other part of one of these sections the wrong way. And now the parts are sort of intermingling with each other and causing more difficulty sliding things back and forth to line up the tabs with their slots. I had to bend some parts out of the way long enough to get and secure the tabs.
And that's it, the model is all finished and put together. It took a solid two hours to put this model together. Even though it looks like a lot of big pieces that should come together fairly quickly, there was some complications involved and I'll talk about that more in my upcoming review video. As always, thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.